Have you ever finished a hot lap in a hooked up car and sat in your rig pumping your fist in the air? Well, here's your chance. Welcome back to the 27. This is the 1991 Williams FW14, or should I say the Formula Classic Generation 3 Model 2? Um, all I can say is good googa mooga. Whatever it is you do to get ready for a sim racing session, bubble bath, foot massage, locking the room, putting the kids to sleep, turning off the lights, whatever. The next time you have a chance to get fully immersed in sim racing, load up this vehicle, throw on this setup, and let it take you. This video will be discussing a custom default setup of the Williams using telemetry, and as a special treat, I found some cockpit cam footage of Nelson PK at Imola 1988. And oh yes, we're gonna do a side-by-side. If you've watched my previous videos, you might think that I'm adverse to driving F1 or any open wheelers for that matter, and that's simply not the case. I love F1 and IndyCar, I watch all of the races. In this game, I know that some of the F1 cars had a rocky road, or a bouncy road, no pun intended, getting them to the state they are today. And some of you out there may still think there are things to do, but from an objective perspective, this car is, is as immersive as it gets. I've never felt this way about any car on any platform. So what do we do with the Generation 3 Mod 2? Well, generally, we are a bit limited to a symmetrical default build. So with that, there are going to be some setup anomalies. However, my overall rationale is sound. I made the suspension quite a bit softer. I felt that it was better for the historical tracks and their bumpy, you know, tarmac. But I stiffened the damping package. We raised the ride height significantly. I changed the aero to favor the front of the car a lot more to use that for rotation instead of the differential, which we locked to get better acceleration. We extracted more horsepower from the gearing as well. It all blends together. So let's take a look at the telemetry real quick, real quick before we get to the side by side. All right, here we are with racing sim tools once again. We're taking a look at the handling tab first and foremost. Always the first check to check the brake bias, pressure, and differentials. So here I felt that the uh, FW14 was a little bit rearward biased with regards to the brakes, and you can tell from all of these spikes um, at, at these crucial points of the track, especially the last corner. You don't want instability there, so I push the uh, brake bias forward and you can see it got rid of most of that problem um, the spikes should always appear on the fronts first before the rears or at the very least mitigate them now the the height of the spikes is determined by your brake foot and also the brake pressure so you can make an adjustments there as well taking a look at the differential tab here down here or differential graph I should say I felt like the uh, the default build was a little bit open for my taste. I like a little bit more lock, so I increased the number of clutch plates here. And you can see the difference, especially on that last corner, which is really important. We were relying on the front uh, arrow of the car to rotate the car and then just feed the acceleration in, whereas with the default build, you're looking at the differential unlocking. That creates a lot of instability in a place where you don't want instability. Um, the next thing I mentioned before was the suspension, we softened it up. Um, so we're taking a look at the lateral stiffness distribution for the default build, and you can see it's a little bit favoring understeer, whereas mine is more right on point where you want it to be around 55%. Um, the other thing I would note on this page is the roll. Because the softer expansion, suspension, there's going to be more roll with the car, and there's also going to be more pitch. But that was necessary because we had to handle all of the um, the track bumps. So, and this is what it's going to look like when you're looking at the track bumps. Uh, let's go to the arrow tab real quick. You see, this is the default build again. You could see all of these up and down lines. That's the suspension basically jumping up and down. And you can see if you zoom in here, you're looking at you know, you know a difference in like. Oh, I should go down to the rake part here. Six, uh, a peak of about seven millimeters, and then it drops out at nine. That's a swing of like a centimeter and a half. If you look at the, the custom build with the damping package, we were able to mitigate that to about, you know, just one centimeter. So about 50% decrease in rear activity with no loss in downforce. Actually, I would say it's an increase in downforce um, because it's, it's the line stays higher 
and more consistent. Now you can see that the front um, wing only adds marginal um, downforce to the front and uh, and I didn't really see a significant um, loss at the end of a straightaway as far as you know top speed. Um, that was surprising to me and I think it's because bec our exit speeds were a lot faster. Um, and if you look down here at the bottom you can see in most places they were. Um, but in some places the exit speeds were better with the defaults that's just you know the way the track goes. The other thing is um, the gearing package was where I was able to accelerate better out of the the, uh, the corners especially after the hairpin. Let's look here this is probably a better example uh, 214 it looks like in third gear and I was at 219 with the custom so the acceleration out of the corner was a lot stronger with the better gearing package and then finally the last corner here you can see that the exit speed is a lot better uh, because it was a lot more stable so we dropped down to 87 kilometers per hour um, where I was at 100 and getting out of that corner is so crucial so let's take a look at the suspension tab um, again let's look at the damper histograms because I did uh, do a lot of work here now keep in mind I had to keep it symmetrical so it's not gonna look perfect like you'd always you'd expect from me um, but you could see that the fronts on the default were rebound biased and stiff compared to the a really soft rear end but with the, the custom build I stiff I softened the front a little bit more you can see the difference here got rid of some of the rebound bias now uh, the reason why the rebound bias still exists I think is because of the symmetrical build um, this is a counterclockwise track so you're gonna have a little bit that I I'd imagine if you went to a clockwise track it would be uh, different but the biggest difference was the, the rear um, you can see that the, the rear is a lot stiffer and then you know that's the reason why we have less of these uh, these peak undulations going on so um, taking a look at the gearing um, this is a big thing I wanted to take advantage of the, the power band a lot more as you can see that the second and third gear with the defaults um, you know you're dropping down to 9,000 RPMs which is down here on the graph that's not optimal if it goes down like that you're losing horsepower there um, and then also I thought that the top end was just fine but that acceleration that we were able to gain from second gear to third gear and then finally all the way through to the sixth gear we had a, I think a horsepower increase we had a top speed increase um, the sixth gear is here this is where you would make a change per the track so I left a lot of leeway because you're going to be going maybe 10 15 kilometers per hour depending on the track faster in the draft so you want to have some leeway there um, but if it's a shorter track you want to shorten the sixth gear and that's all you need to do for a, a track to track change um, finally let's take a look at the run tab now I felt that the the wear on the tires for the default was just fine uh, but you can see that the grip was lower um, we increased the grip quite a bit but also we increased the rear the wear quite a, quite a bit now that could be because of the the track and you know braking harder and uh, locking up a little bit more um, that will change change that it also I suspect the way it's set up that if it was a clockwise track the front left would be the one that's higher than the rear um, I felt like we didn't have enough tools to play with the default setup that I could reduce the front right tire wear that I would normally do so it's not as pretty as I'd like it um, the default is is okay and then let's look at the uh, cambering and pressuring you could see that the default has uh, it's really kind of all over the place cambering wise and I felt that the defaults the pressure was a little bit too high so we optimized the uh, grip um, for due to the cambering of the tires and then also we made the uh, we brought the pressures back under control so there you have it the FW14 or the Generation 3 Mod 2. Next, as promised, side by side with Nelson PK at Imola 1988. Up to the in sixth gear, doing about 190 miles an hour, this long sweeping left-hander, which leads into a curving right, and that is the Villeneuve curve, named after the
famous Canadian driver. Now up to the Tosa bend, the famous Tosa bend, second gear, 60 miles an hour. It's climbing from here up towards the Piratella, to third gear, to fourth, to fifth gear, doing 155 miles an hour over the crest. The speed still building, now the left hander, fourth gear, this is the Piratella, and from here we start to drop downhill to the famous Aqua Minerale bends. Here they are, right, left, and you can go over the grass very easily there if you're not careful, doing about 155 miles an hour here, climbing up to the chicane at the very Anta Alta at the top of the hill. It's coming now, and it's a right and a left, third gear, over 100 miles an hour. Now, dropping downhill again, the left-hander, and that goes on towards the famous Rivazza, the double 90-degree bend, both left, and this is the first of them. Left here, second gear, up into third, the second left-hander here, now the speed is building up towards 155 miles an hour to the very Antabasa, the right-hander. And then it breaks hard on, third gear, still 100 miles an hour, into the Traguardo, left and right, then the grandstand on the left, the control tower on the right, and that was a lap of Imola with Nelson Pico. Now isn't that just cool? Uh, not to say I'm faster than Nelson Piquet, he probably had a full fuel load and I didn't have the threat of dying if I made a mistake. Um, a special thanks has to go out to Chris I2174 for the 1991 F1 livery package. Superb work, Chris. A link to, the, to download this pack from the race department is provided below. I always forget to mention to hit the like button, comment, and perhaps even subscribe to the channel. Your support really keeps me going. Um, there's a Discord link to the Steelcast 27 Racing Network. Feel free to join, interact, or linger. There are some advantages as channel updates and setup updates will be posted there. If you're interested in or are already a user of Racing Sim Tools, we're building a parameter database for AMS2 and it's slowly growing. I really hope you enjoy this build as much as I did. It's downloadable from the leaderboards from the contemporary Imola. Look for Steer Reserve. There may be some subtle changes, but it'll get you 90% there. Keep in mind, this is a raced build, so it's quick. Uh, next week is going to be a big week. We have the GT3R at Nordschleife. We have mo the March development update to look forward to. And Super V8s are on the horizon. In the meantime, best of luck to you, and take care.